And then I, I just want to invoke, as we get closer to closing, the, the divine creative imagination. Because it's through the imagination that Watiko works, and it's through the imagination that it actually gets healed. So, um, if we can imagine for a second, just imagine that you're in a dream at night, okay? And in an, in an ordinary dream, you typically don't know, unless you're really fortunate that you're dreaming, you actually think it's real, you think the environment is objective and solid, and that you exist as the dream ego. In the dream, that's who you're imagining you are. And, um, but say something happens in the dream that actually helps you to recognize the nature of your situation, that is that you're dreaming and you, you, have, you wake up in that dream. Not out of the dream, but you wake up in the dream and you have the lucidity of like, oh my God, now I recognize the nature of my situation, I'm dreaming. And, and what have you had the recognition of? Is that, oh, who you've been imagining you are, the dream ego, this limited ego in the dream is not who you are, that's just a model for who you are. That's just, who, who you actually are is the dreamer of the dream. And you realize the dreamer of the dream is not separate from the whole dream. And all of a sudden you realize, well, all of the dream characters in that dream, they're parts of you. And you know, and that's where the compassion comes in, right? But let's let's invoke that imagination once more. Now imagine you have that experience in a night dream that you recognize you're dreaming. You have lucidity. And then imagine you connect with another dream character in that dream who's also realizing that they're dreaming. And they also recognize that what they're experiencing is just their own energy, their own mind, that they're not out of their mind, but they're inside their mind. Okay? Now, imagine not just two people, but what would you imagine would happen if there were 10 or 100 or 500 people in that night dream who all were having that lucidity and all connecting with each other and putting their realization together and contemplating what they're realizing. Oh my God, this is all a dream. This is a mass shared dream. The way it's manifesting is a function of how we dream it. It's nothing other than our own consciousness materialized into form. Okay? And I would, I would then suggest that in that imagination that those dreamers who are awakening to the nature of their situation could discover that they could change the dream. Particularly when they put what I call their sacred power of dreaming together. Now that was just a description of a night dream. And what I'm suggesting in the book, and I go into this during a lot of the second half of the book, is that what I just described is actually the nature of our situation right now in the waking dream that as more and more of us wake up, we can connect with each other through that open heart of lucidity and compassion where we recognize we're not separate and we could, it's what I call conspire to co-inspire. It's a true conspiracy theory. <laughs> and we can dream ourselves awake. And this is an evolutionary impulse offered to us by the universe that we're invited to partake. And, um, you know, if people tell me, oh, you're, you're only, you're just dreaming, Paul, I would say, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, you know? And um, there is something, when we come together in a certain way, we can activate the, the collective, the genius in all of us and um, absolutely change the world and that's what's actually not just offered to us but it's being demanded of us by Watiko because you know for those of us who aren't just you know ostriches and having a blind eye there's this incredible deeper not just personal but archetypal evil that's playing out all throughout the world and there's something that's being shown to us, and that's what I'm trying to talk about in the book. 
And if I can just close with a short dream, and I tell this dream in the book, at least just a little bit of it. In this dream, I had this dream in the morning, two of my teachers, these great, you know, um, enlightened bodhisattvic beings from, from Tibet were coming to, you know, coming for a visit. So I think I had a lot of energy, and I got woken up that morning by this incredible dream. And the dream was, I and a number, a whole bunch of us, we were looking for a vampire. And we were trying to find this vampire. And we were all chanting in the dream, Bella Lagosi, Bella Lagosi. You know? <laughs> and, and then I see, I see the vampire, I see Dracula. And I point them out to everybody else in the dream and no one else can see him. And then I wake up. Okay. Now how come I tell that dream? Is because I'm that dream, I'm, I'm in my imagination, I'm actively imagining that dream in my life. And as I've gotten more in touch with my own self, I've developed a fluency or uh, an ability to articulate the way to see that vampire, and that's what this book is.